All right. Thank you, everybody, for, for being here today. Uh, my name is John Madison. I'll be your, your moderator this evening. Uh, just a few things to, to cover real quick. Just a special thank you to our advanced theater students, uh, Loudon Stanford and Aubriano Martinez, for uh, the lights and, and audio this evening. Uh, we do have child care, and, and thank you so much for our Palace students and the National Junior Honor Society for helping uh, take care of our kiddos while we're going through this. Um, and then thank you to our uh, culinary students for putting together the, the refreshments. Those are, are really good. The <laughs> uh, Hill Independent is an honor to be hosting uh, the candidate forum for the LHISD Board of Trustees. And thank you to uh, Superintendent Steve Snell for, for inviting us to, to participate. Uh, the forum will begin shortly, but let me first go over a few uh, of the format for this evening's uh, event. Um, uh, our interviewers today are Rachel Madison and Scott Akanovich, um, and our timekeeper is Stacy Cole, uh, all part of our, our uh, Liberty Independent staff, um, and, and they worked hard to, to make this happen this evening, as well as uh, 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 staff from uh, the, the school, uh, school district as well. Um, there are two places up for election. Uh, for place one, uh, we'll hear from Brandon Kennedy and Corey Milan. Chris Neighbors and incumbent Terry Smith. For place two, we'll hear from, hear from Antonio uh, Canas and incumbent uh, Kendall Carter. Uh, we'll begin with place two this evening. Each candidate will have one minute for opening remarks, 90 seconds for closing remarks, and each candidate will have 90 seconds to answer the question. Um, after each candidate has answered the question, they will each have 30 seconds for response. Prior to the event, candidate seating was determined by a draw. Questions have been determined by the Regional Independent staff ahead of the forum, uh, taking into account for uh, community input. Uh, we will not accept questions from the audience. When we ask that the audience please refrain from clapping or cheering until the conclusion of each place discussion to prevent delays and, and limit interruptions. Uh, following the forum, Superintendent Steve Snell uh, will be presenting uh, some important information about the upcoming bond election. We really encourage you all to stick around and listen. Uh, we'll now start with our introductions, and um, Antonio, I'll give it over to you. It's never good to be the first one. I'm Antonio Cañas. Uh, some of you guys already know me. Some of you like you guys to be the first time seeing me. I've uh, been here almost three years in Liberty Hill ISD. I love this uh, area. It's one of the best uh, areas in Central Texas, in my opinion. I did 24 years in the military and after retiring in 2020, I bought a home in Georgetown, thinking I was going to go to Georgetown ISD, but by default, I ended up in Liberty Hill, and I love it. I fell in love. Um, the community is awesome. My kids went to the intermediate slash um, elementary uh, I was, and I love it. Uh, so I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about myself uh, to make it more formal, but my goals is always family, faith, Freedom and fairness. That's very important for anybody. You gotta be fair, you gotta make sure that everybody is accountable. I am a modest individual who loves to help others and need a positive impact on our community with tangible actions such as helping community during a disaster and guiding teenagers that need assistance. I am resourceful and I'm always finding a life plan B for any problems. Quitting is not an option and I learned that from the military. I set my goals of becoming a board member, and I will continue to want to be that. Uh, when I joined the military, I set my goals to be a commission officer, and I accomplished that 12 years later, and I retired as a captain in the United States Army. Um, I'm a lifetime learner. I love serving for uh, everybody. Well, I have three kids in the, uh, currently at uh, LSDI, and I'm interested in the quality of education in Hawaii and managing our tax dollars. I have participated in many uh, board activities. I have talked about the necessities, and most important, I am very involved in my community. I was a grateful member of the Lightning Branch community as the garage sale. Um, I will be proud to be a member of the ISD board and serve this great district community again, that has so much potential. Most important, I will take care of the teachers and our students, which they need uh, individuals that care for them. Thank you. Uh, Kendall Carter. I've lived in Liberty Hill for the past 12 years and have two kids. My daughter's in eighth grade at Liberty Hill Middle School. My 
son is fifth grade at Little Bird, and uh, my wife is a teacher at Little Bird. And currently, I've served on the school board place too, and uh, some of the past volunteer work that kind of led to me being on the school board, uh, I was involved with the Middle Youth Soccer Association, the Middle Youth Football Association, uh, Youth Baseball, uh, I was an uh, HOA president, um, an HOA, and I served on the uh, Long Range Planning Committee and uh, Bond Committee previously before then eventually getting onto the school board. So that's kind of like the progression of how I've how led to here. So, but yeah, I've been in Liberty Hill for 12 years. So my son was born here, my daughter and uh, wife and I moved here when uh, she was about two. So I've been here for a little bit, but uh, we, uh, have uh, seen this community grow and uh, we're excited about the future of Liberty Hill and that's why I continue to volunteer. So I appreciate it. All right, here we go, guys. Okay. Um, so, first question uh, is for Mr. Kanyas. Um, Liberty Hill ISD has three bonds on the ballot. How do you feel these three bonds will help the students of LHISD, faculty, staff, and overall community? And finally, advise if you will be voting for any or all of the bonds. Can you guys hear me? I'm going to speak out without the mic. Okay. Uh, the bond is a very important thing for everybody in this community. Uh, I was part of the community bond last uh, cycle, two years ago, and I participated, and uh, I was very proud to be part of the community. I support uh, Proposition 8. It's very necessary because our growth is expanding. Our community has continued to grow in the last two years, and will continue to grow as we expand. And that's not going to stop uh, the forecast that Mr. Uh, Snail showed me when I first walked in, pushed this all the way to 2032, and that is just almost six years from now. So, with that being said, I am well uh, uh, for Proposition A. Proposition B is also very important because we want to be competitive with the technology that is out there. A lot of our students are graduating our, our high school and they're going to the agriculture fields and they need to be in front of the line. Um, the Proposition C is a little bit questionable, but I am still looking into it. And the reason is because I am one of those individuals that um, if I see something that's a little bit too much similar to something else, the question from last time, I will question it and I will think really deep into it. And that's what Proposition C is one of those that I saw in the last two years. And um, I already talked to the individual that did that and she kind of informed me and educated me. And that's the important thing would be bond. Uh, because uh, we're going to be educated citizens. We just don't want to be throwing it and giving stuff to us and say, here, uh, take it or leave it kind of situation. We want to digest and be informed. And that's what I'm doing. And I think right now that's a, that's a good proposition so far. All right? Yeah, thank you. Um, so the three propositions um, were presented to the school board and presented to the community based off a group of about 90 uh, community members. And so they went through months and months of work to come up with those three propositions. And so I'm for the three propositions, A, B, and C, um, based on their feedback, their intelligence, um, and their review and hard work that they put into those propositions to be thoughtful, mindful of the community and the budget. Every, everything in there that I've seen has been a frugal approach of how do we best spend the dollars uh, from the tax revenues. And uh, 
you know, we have to go out for bonds to, to, to get anything for this district, whether it be a campus or a, a field or a, a, an art facility. Um, and so knowing that we're borrowing the money um, to get the things that we need for Liberty Hill for the students and for the teachers and for the administration um, doesn't come lightly. And it's taken with a lot of thought and a lot of preparation to make sure that the bonds uh, and the dollars from the bond are spent wisely. thing is, if we want to make a difference, you got to go. Uh, if you don't, you don't make no difference. Uh, there's a reason why bonds are done during our cycle seasons, and that's because not many people go. That's just the bottom line. I got a master's degree in political science, and there's a reason why this stuff happens. So if you're not engaged, you don't make a difference. That's the bottom line. Uh, those who vote got a voice. So if you're complaining about a bond or anything like that and you don't vote, uh, that's your, your fault. Uh, you just gotta vote and make a difference. That's my only take on this. And if you support our community, you will be supporting this bond. That's all I gotta say. Okay, I think we're on. <laughs> Thank y'all for being patient while we deal with the technical issues. Um, all right, next question um, is for Mr. Carter to answer first. Um, how important is it to agree with fellow trustees even if your personal views differ on certain issues? Sometimes there'd be some varying opinions um, on that, but I would say for the most part we we agree. However, um, there's been some long deliberations with disagreements, um, but I think it's important to show uh, unity from the school board to the community that even if we don't have the same opinion, we can see the other see other opinions and agree to a common ground for a unified front uh, for us all. Same question. Um, that's a good question. Uh, collaboration and cooperation is key. I was uh, teaching the school uh, as a substitute and that's one of the things I kind of, um, in leadership and I told them, that's a leader, you gotta make sure that you have, give people direction, purpose, and motivation. That's just the definition in the army wise. But uh, we also got to be as a leader, where we're in charge, everybody can be in charge, anybody in the committee can probably come up with a, uh, something to approach, we just collaborate and come up with a solution to it. And I, I love Mr. Snell's approach on that, because anybody can just go in there and talk for three minutes, which I have done multiple times, and bring on your uh, problem or whatever you have, and they will debate it, and you will see the results. Um, Collaboration is important. We always have individuals with different personalities, the shakers and movers, the background workers, the ones that you know that they're in the background, they're not the spotlight rangers, they call it, but they do stuff. And you gotta just get to know the people. You gotta get to know what to do and how to move those individuals and work as a team. That, that's very important. Communication is the key. And important communication, like I was teaching my students when I was a substitute, is there's two parts the sender and the receiver, but most important is the feedback. That's the one that most people forget to do, get feedback. And that's why I like Mr. Snell, because uh, I see him around in the bus getting feedback from the community. He's not just sending messages and the community receiving. 
he's out there getting feedback and making sure that we get it, uh, we get it accomplished. Yeah. 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 Okay, Mr. Kanye's uh, question number three. A hot topic in the country the past few years, and especially in our school district this year, has been bullying. What are some key changes you hope to implement once you are elected? Did you write that question? Um, about uh, bullying. Uh, um, bullying is a big deal across the country um, now, and especially in our district, there has been an issue. So, what kind of changes would you make as far as addressing the bullying issue? Well, being in the military for 24 years, I know that uh, you know batching and all that other stuff, and being part of the moderators, is it could get out of control sometimes. Um, I've been in the school here in the Liberty Hill uh, Middle School and in the high school. Uh, the most important thing is uh, I work as an HR officer in, for the state, and the most important thing is put it black and white. Put it in black and white so we see the policy in place, and also at the same time you gotta enforce those policies. Uh, if I enforce those policies, I already talked to Mr. Uh, Snail about what are we doing with individuals that are participating? Are we just throwing them out there and so they can get worse or we are uh, reevaluating them and making sure that they don't commit that again? Uh, because sometimes it's not just a, a, the bully, uh, it is the bully it, doing the, the interaction. But at the same time, what are we doing to fix that? Are we getting counselors out there in place for that individual? Because some, some of those individuals have some problems back home that they might need additional resources that the school may need to provide because we just don't want to uh, send that, uh, what they call it when I was growing up, the pipeline from high school to jail. And that happens a lot because bullying is not just a thing that just happened in Liberty Hill. That's worldwide, international. Uh, even in the military, it's more than anything in those places. So the best thing is policy in place, enforce those policy, and have solutions for those problems, and ensure that those uh, individuals, the problem is being resolved. That's the thing. Yeah, thank you. So I think bullying looks different today than it did maybe when we were in school. Um, so. For me in particular, the bullying in school looked, uh, was more of a physical, and today it's more of a mental, it could be social, uh, social media, online, um, threats and things like that. So I know it looks different today, and so I think um, understanding what the term bullying means to certain students, certain groups, um, admin and staff is key is to make sure that we have a clear understanding of what the bullying can mean as a in a totality. Um, and then, um, Mr. Kanye had, had a good point about making sure that we have uh, policies in place and then make sure those policies are enforced. And then, uh, one of the key points, I think, is to continue the student-led organizations to make sure that student-led organizations are promoted and and continue to uh, evolve into bigger and bigger groups. I know we have a few of them. I know high school comes down and does some stuff for eighth grade leadership, um, but I think that we have to uh, continue to push the envelope when it comes to bullying to make sure that we understand it as admin and staff and that we uh, help get more and more students and parents involved with anti-bullying and what that means um, to their students and to, and to this new society. Um, one thing that I forgot to say when I uh, was speaking about the uh, game, parents make a difference. Um, and I know some of our elementary got this program, which is called Watch Dogs. And that's a very important kind of, uh, program because our parents are there, they are, are providing the additional face uh, that some elementary may need. And that's very helpful. I did it when my son was in, in elementary, and that's when the, the, the kids' brains serving a lot of the information. And when they see a parent there, they, they can tell the difference. You can see the difference in the schools. Okay, the next question is for Mr. Carter to begin with. Describe the single most important qualification or characteristic that you believe makes you the ideal candidate for the school board. Yeah, 
Yeah, good question. So, single most important qualification I think would be uh, humble. And what I mean by that, so being humble is that for, for this particular set is that the school board's not about me, right? So, um, it's about us being a team of eight. So, the seven school board members plus the superintendent is the team of eight, and that's what it's about. It's not about me. It's about the team of eight and how we can take the community feedback, listen to what people are saying, and implement that into our schools with good policies. And so um, I think that's the most important characteristic or trait is, is that I understand that it's not about me. Uh, I would tell you that when I first got on the school board, I was still learning that. And I think that that's one of the biggest things that from some of my uh, fellow trustees um, that I've learned is that it's, it's about the kids and what we're doing for them and how do we put their academic success first. And so us as a team of eight, how do we um, envision Liberty Hill moving forward and keeping um, Liberty Hill characteristics in all of our schools as we keep adding schools and things like that. So, um, that's what I would say is being home and knowing that it's a team of eight and not, nothing that about me. He stole one of my favorite ones. I'm always one that I have written down, but I will elaborate on the humbleness portion. Um, empathy and sympathy is one of those two words that people get confused. Um, and, you know, I was talking to my daughter about that. What is the difference between being empathetic and being sympathetic? A person that is empathetic is more of is humble. They are able to get into the ground of the situation and not just say, I'm sorry, or I'm going to, you know, uh, let's pray for that. We make a difference. We kind of guide that person. We're there for that person at the time. That's, that's the, the part of the empathetic kind of, that's where I'm at. Uh, throughout my 24 years, I learned that being empathetic can get you a long way, make more friends, and you because people can depend on you, they know that you're going to be there for them. And then you're not going to just give them words, uh, empty words. You do them with actions too. Um, another thing is I'm open-minded and very resourceful. Uh, as I told you earlier, it took me 12 years, but I, I, became, I did my dream of becoming a commission officer in the military. I get my dream of returning to Georgetown, and I am here running for a board of trustees, which is another one of my goals making a difference in my community while I'm just going to be living because this is where I chose to be and if I'm not uh, elected as a board member, you still see me making a difference in this community and the board members here know it, they will hear from me uh, either if I get elected or not because that's what I am. I love this community and I, and I think this is my, my community and I will protect it. Uh, that's who I am. Question number five, Mr. Tanyas, if elected, how would you go about balancing what's best for the district from a financial standpoint while maintaining what's best for students and families? Well, as a substitute that I've done for the past 90 days, the most important thing is hiring the best teachers. Uh, that's very important. Uh, we are very low on teachers. Uh, substitutes are being called left and right because our coaches got to go, our teachers got to parents passed away, stuff like that. And we spend the class our students. Um, we got, if, if plus at the same time, you know, the last two years that we were stuck with the COVID-19, a lot of our kids, especially in the elementary, where most of their brain is sucking all that information, they lost two years of education right there. So, I will be 100% uh, pushing forward with getting additional teachers, getting more tutors, especially at the elementary area, because that's where the kids' brain is more open for ideas, open for the information that somebody's giving them. Because by the time you get to junior high, which I have now, or high school, some of them are more worried about what their friends are thinking, what are they going to impress with their friends. And the information that they learn in elementary, they're bringing it up to a way to uh, high school, which that was the case with me. I was uh, very enforced in my elementary, my godmother, I forgot when I was in Noble, my godmother was uh, um, 
principal, and she helped me, she guided me those, during those five years of my lifetime, which made me a, a better person when I grew up. So um, that, that's just one of the things, elementary is the key for uh, the, the education of everything. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna answer it slightly differently. Uh, so Liberty Hill is in a great position. Uh, Ms. Guerrero is actually here in the crowd tonight, and if you don't know, um, Liberty Hill um, is currently receiving an A rating as far as the financial uh, review goes, and then uh, Ms. Guerrero's team uh, had an independent audit um, last year where they received a zero amendment audit, um, meaning that somebody came in and audited our books, and then they found zero, down to the penny, zero changes that they were gonna make. Additionally, Mrs. Guerrero uh, most recently was, and I'll mess this stat up, but it was a 10 out of uh, 100, uh, uh, 900 um, CFOs won an award for recognition. And like I said, I'm messing it up a little bit, but she was, she's constantly recognized as one of the best CFOs for independent school districts in the state of Texas and Liberty Hill is lucky to have her. And I mentioned that because the question was, how are we gonna balance um, the financial budget to make sure that we have what we need versus some of the ones that we've got? Ms. Guerrero um, is our leader and in, that, in that category. And so we have a great leader leading that team. And then, uh, so the school board has it slightly easier whenever we have such a great leader with great representation uh, to make some of the decisions that we need to make. Um, so, thank you, Mrs. Guerrero. Uh, yeah, he kind of put the financial, which I forgot to answer that part. But I think most important is the teachers, but that financial portion is very important. And I've been to the board meetings, which I always compliment Mrs. Guerrero, which uh, about 90% of those board meetings are run by her. And uh, everything she says are uh, is just, Facts. And, I, and I love it. She puts people in check when they are not doing their part and I've seen her. So uh, thank you for reminding me about that part. She does a great job for the district. So, yeah. Okay, that actually uh, concludes the discussion for, for place two. Thank you uh, to Antonio and Ben Kendall for your, for your time today. And um, uh, we're going to take a five minute break so that I can recover from running back and forth across the stage. And uh, we'll, get, we'll get the rest of the, we'll get the, everybody set up for, for place one and hopefully get some of the audio issues for out.
School boards should serve as centers of both students, school faculties, and the community. Trustees must be forward thinkers and invite all parties to collaborate to make the best strategic decisions for our district. To assist the district with the shortage of teachers, I recently started working as a substitute teacher, as a substitute teacher for half a day on Fridays. Public schools are crucial to individual students, community, and national, national success. Everyone can accomplish their dreams and be productive citizens. Public schools are one of the most important functions of government and play a significant role in developing the future leaders of the United States. Public education has been known as the great equalizer, giving all children the same opportunities to learn regardless of their neighborhood in which they live. As you guys know, I'm a Texan, I love it now, and there's no doubt this is the legislation here. I work for the state, and there's a lot of uh, bills that are being passed as we speak today. And a lot of them are going to be affecting our community, and a lot of them are going to be affecting us as citizens of Texas. So in order to make a difference, you got to go vote. If you don't vote for any of us in this place, at least vote for the bond, because our community needs it, our children needs it, and most important, our teachers need you guys to go vote. That's all, guys. Thank you, Joe. Again, I apologize for the, for the error there. We can have our uh, other candidates come up and we'll start here momentarily. Howdy, my name is Corey Milam. 
Uh, moved to Liberty Hill in 2015. I have uh, my wife, Carrie, and I have three beautiful children. Maggie, who's a freshman at the high school. Uh, Annie, who's a seventh grader here. And Gage, who's a sixth grader here at San Marino Middle School. Um, like I said, been here since 2015. We fell in love with this community immediately. Dove right into what we could volunteering-wise. Uh, served on the board for the Liberty Hill Youth League. Um, I'm also a substitute teacher here in the district, and I help when I can. Uh, side note on that, I recommend at least one parent substitute at least one time in this district because it gives you a greater appreciation of what these people do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, highly recommended. Um, and then most recently served on the Long Range Planning Committee uh, that everybody's been talking about. Um, in the construction industry, been in that for over 20 years, from building houses to managing large construction projects. Uh, I feel like that would be a huge value to this district when it comes to what we have with the future growth and the current construction that we have going on. Um, went to Texas A&M. Thank you. Uh, looking forward to the opportunity to serve you guys, um, serve the district, and serve our kids and teachers. Thank you very much. Hi, y'all. I'm Brandon Cannon. I'm running for the Liberty Hill School Board Place 1. I have two daughters, Harper, who is seven, she's a first grader at Bill Burton, and my youngest daughter, Family, is three. My wife, Jessica, and I both went to Liberty Hill, kindergarten through 12th grade. We want our daughters to experience the same great school district that we did. I graduated from Texas A&M <laughs> with a business degree, and I am now the Director of Customer Service and Vendor Relations for Texas Electric Cooperatives. I have experience with contractors and navigating supply chain issues. Over the last year, I have been attending school board meetings and I'm currently the chair of the School Health Advisory Council. I want to serve on the board to help spend tax dollars wisely and advise on policies to keep our small town values intact and get us back to our roots. All right, question number one, um, we'll start with Mr. Smith. Liberty Hill ISD has three bonds on the ballot. How do you feel that these three bonds will help the students of LHISD, faculty, staff, and overall community? And finally, advise if you will be voting for any or all of the bonds. So, um, first of all, uh, all three bonds I will be voting yes for, um, because if you're voting no, and you want to be on the school board, uh, you're in the wrong line of work. Uh, second of all, um, uh, all the bonds are important. Uh, Prop A, we need a new high school, otherwise we're not going to be able to put our kiddos anywhere with the growth that's coming out in the district. Uh, Prop B, we got to replace the uh, technology uh, devices um, because they're on a life cycle, otherwise we're stuck with old, outdated uh, Software, laptops, computers, cell phones, radios, tablets, um, and all that other crazy fun stuff. Um, and then Prop C is additions to uh, the uh, the athletic the athletic fields and the building of facilities out there. Gotta have restrooms for all the fans that go there on Friday nights because this town shuts down on Friday nights. Um, and uh, yeah, and the, the, the field turf has to be replaced because the padding is is getting worn out and that's a safety issue for our our kids. And it's not just the football players that use that field, it's all the sports, soccer, the band, um, the cross country runs out there. Um, but all, all, everything runs on that football field, it's not just football, so that, that turf goes through a lot on a year to year basis. Good question. So yes, I support all three bonds. Um, I believe that the growth in the district, which is because of all of us moving here, because of the awesome values that Liberty Hill holds, uh, we're kind of blamed for that growth, right? So we need to support the bonds. Um, we need the schools. We need the we need the room for the kiddos. Nobody wants their kiddos going to school in portables, and it's really hard to hire great teachers and tell them, hey, we're going to stick you out in the portable. Nobody likes that. Safety and security should be of most concern as well, and portables just they're not as secure as a big building like this. 
So we definitely have to support Prop A, Prop B for the technology it just makes sense because technology gets old, we have to replace it. Like it or not, sometimes we want to fight the use of technology, but it's here and we have to make sure that our kiddos are being sent into the future with the best stuff they, they, can, they can get now. And then one of the businesses that I own is an artificial turf company. We don't do football fields, but I know about the industry and, and I know that the artificial turf of those stadiums now, I believe, is 12 years old and it is time to replace it. Usually the lifespan is about 8 to 12, they say about 10 years, sorry. Um, and it is time to replace it. It's just an unfortunate thing. We save a ton of money on maintenance and whatnot. And when people tell you that they don't want to see money going to the football team, like has already been said, the football team actually uses the artificial turf fields the least amount of almost any other group that uses it between band, soccer, etc. So I definitely support them and I believe it'll be a huge help to the community. I 100% am voting yes for all three bonds. Um, these guys have said everything that needs to be said. I think one thing that people need to understand or look into is if you take an example of Dripping Springs ISD and what's going on over there right now, uh, there are anti bond pack folks there. And if you, uh, I challenge you to go read what's going on with them, they're going to have upwards of, I think, 70 portables or something of that nature, something extreme. Um, if we don't pass this bond this year, our district is looking at having to purchase 41 new portables, plus or minus, by the year 2026, upwards of $6.5 million that will be used to purchase those. And then uh, that money comes from our m and budget. Um, that's what we use to pay our teachers, salaries, things of that nature. So I can promise you that our, our district will not enjoy having 41 new portables in our, for our kids to go to school in. So 100% voting Prop A, B, and C. Thank you. going last in a four-person group, right? So these guys have all said everything I think. Uh, I definitely voted yes on probably A, B, and C. Uh, turf, I know everyone thinks just football food, but there's so many other things that use the turf on that stadium, and it's a safety issue. I don't want to send my kids somewhere where they could potentially get hurt because something is just out of date. Um, it's no secret that one of the biggest problems facing in the education society these days is teacher retention. Our teachers are having to go teach in portables and they can go to a neighboring district that they can teach in a classroom environment that has a low student teacher ratio. There's going to be teachers leaving. Uh, one thing I've campaigned about is small town values. Uh, you lose that when you have overcrowded campuses and high teacher to student ratio. Uh, for example, they just did the redistricting that all of y'all saw from elementary schools. Santa Rita no, Santa Rita Elementary School, even after redistricting, is still going to be overcrowded with the opening of a new school. We are a very fast growing district and it's very important for the bonds to pass so we can get all these things in place to keep up with the growth that our district is seeing. Okay, question number two, Mr. Neighbors. First up, attracting and retaining teachers continues to be a challenge across the country. What ideas do you have for recruiting and keeping experienced and talented professionals in Liberty Hill? Good question. Good question. So as a business owner, um, I deal with the same struggles. I have to attract talent and uh, keep them. And in today's world, that can be more and more difficult. Um, one of the things that I've preached on the campaign trail is that I want to bring back the excitement for education, not just for teachers, but for parents. If you've followed me at all, you've seen that I've shared a ton of data to pull people in, and some of the compliments that I've gotten while meeting with people is they love the data. Some stuff they don't know. And it's funny that we don't know what we don't know until we see that info, and, they, and that little bulb goes off. Um, I love the fact that we've been able to dig deep through, through our Facebook page and share and share and share and it's brought parents in saying, hey, I didn't know that. And then I can tee off of that and bring parents into the loop and say, hey, you also understand this is what teachers are having to deal with in the classroom. This is what's going on in the classroom. Hey, we need help with this. Can you, you, know, can you guys look into this? Can you address this? It's the same things that I see in practice every day at, at my business. 
trying to encourage people to be excited, trying to encourage them to be positive, trying to encourage them to get involved. And those are the things that I've been preaching constantly is we want parents and teachers to come back together. It feels like we've drifted apart a little bit, and I want to make sure that that excitement is still there so that we can do what's best for our kids. So, what I've, when I've been talking to folks on this campaign trail, if you will, um, when I'm talking to teachers and admins, I, the, the biggest thing that comes out from, from them is they're tired. They're worn out. They have to do there's so much that they have to do on a daily basis. Um, I know there's some needs that haven't been met. There's some things that they need. Um, I think the biggest thing with our teachers is being present for them. Um, showing up, having somebody to talk to, uh, listening to their needs and wants, and trying to fulfill those. Uh, the bond is obviously a huge thing for our teachers, but also, I mean, when it boils down to it, when you talk to folks that live in our district but don't teach in our district, it's really the pay we have. Competitive pay outside of our district, if you take Leander or whatnot. So there's multiple factors that play into retainage and hiring the brightest and best teachers. Um, but I think with what we have right now to retain with what we have is just listening to what, what their wants and needs are and trying to perform. Yeah, I'll so I work in the business world as well. One of the hardest things to do right now is hire people entertain people. People are always leaving to go somewhere else. But I think something that's important about our district, and if you look it up, it's the beliefs posted about our district that President Parsons posted the other day. We believe in attracting and training and developing an effective and diverse staff. We believe in providing safe and secure learning environments for students and staff. We believe in a unified community embracing collaborative partnerships with parents strengthens the education process. When you have an environment in any business or in a school district like that, that keeps teachers here. The other important side is to make sure we listen and that as board members, we are always available. Some of the teachers that I have talked to have said, I feel like if I come forward, my, my questions might fall on deaf ears, or if I come forward, I might get in trouble. I don't think that's the case with this board, and I always tell people that when I'm talking to them, but I think it's very important that every teacher administrator and staff in this district know that the board is accessible at any time by any means. And I gotta follow all of that. Um, how to retain and recruit the best people. Um, well, one, we have the best people um, and the best continue to recruit the best. If you don't have the best facilities, the best technology, uh, the best of everything that this board tries to put forth to our uh, individual teachers, staff, faculty, then they're going to leave no matter what you pay. Right? You can't give, you, you can't shortchange the people that are boots on the ground every day. Um, we as board members show up once a month and we vote on things that the district needs, but without the teachers and the teachers, principals, faculty, and staff, input, um, nothing gets moving. Um, and I think that from the top down, it all starts with leadership and you couldn't ask for a better superintendent than uh, Superintendent Snell uh, because I believe that his leadership is the one, it is the main thing that attracts people to come to this school district um, and that wants to work here and they, they learn and grow and thrive. We've had people, um, um, move from different districts to come to Liberty Hill because of the, um, the core values that we all have, which is what's best for the students and how do we best serve the community. One other thing I didn't want to mention was at the school board meeting this week, they're working on their budget process for the next school year. And in that meeting is a non-negotiable. That non-negotiable is teacher salary increases. That's very important as we go into this next phase to make sure we retain our teachers, is that all the teachers know their pay is not forgotten by our board, and it's at the front and center of everything that this district is doing. Okay.
Okay, the next question will be for Mr. Milo to answer first. Um, how do you believe the school district should work with the City of Liberty Hill on traffic issues in light of the fact that new campuses can often create more traffic congestion? Well, that's a tough one. <laughs> uh, Kendall knows. He just raised his hand. <laughs> so I believe that uh, obviously we need to work with an open mind with our uh, with the city of Liberty Hill, one hundred percent. And I believe that whatever we are required to do or need to do, and I know that Mr. Snell has uh, reached out to our uh, city council and has worked with them um, in the past, and. Um, I believe that they should continue to work together and try to find a happy, happy medium there where they can all meet in the middle and, and work it out because um, it is it does get contentious at times. Um, but I, I do believe that Liberty Hill ISD should obviously help in that regard with the city. Um, One thing that our district has done is they've actually hired a private consultant to come in and do traffic impact studies. Uh, if you attend some of the school board meetings, she's done the presenter that came did an ex excellent job in showing it's not actually the school that causes the traffic issues in our downtown area. It's all the people that cut through downtown to go around 29, they go down County Road 279 to get to Austin to get to work. But on the flip side of that, the school district does a really good job. Every time they build a new campus, they look at the property they have and they lay it out to make sure that we're keeping parents off the main road, on the property, and that they get out and they get out quick so they can get on their way. And in regards to the city council, we're two governing bodies inside of, inside of one community. And I think it's very important that both sides work together efficiently and effectively to make sure that we are putting the values of this community first, the taxpayers first, our students first, and all of our teachers and educators first. Some of those meetings just to get to know a little bit more about the things going on 
in their mind. And then also, I was really proud of the work that the LRBC did, the Long Range Planning Committee, um, and some of the Dustin and some of them helped guide that discussion of moving the bus bar. So the bus facility will be moved over to the new high school, middle school location, and that will definitely help out with traffic. The other thing that I'm really happy with is Mr. Snell's ability to get developers on board with donating land in communities. That helps dramatically, as you can imagine, because now there's no commute, right? The, the vast majority of those people actually are walking or driving a short distance to school. So I want to see those things continue. Okay, question number four, Mr. Kennedy. Do you support proposed legislation that would allow public tax dollars to be used on private schools? That's a great question. So that's kind of a two-fold question. I think it's the school system we have is part of our state. And to take taxpayers' money and give to people to go spend it in a private institution doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you're trying to fix your school system. And the other flip side of that is that if you're trying to give an incentive to a parent to take their kids somewhere else that's higher than the tax allotment that the state gives the district, it doesn't make a lot of sense. You're paying more for somebody to go somewhere else instead of propping up your school system. So to that point, no, I don't agree with that. Uh, that's a hard no. I'm set. So it's a great question. It's a complicated question. Those tax dollars are your dollars. So it's hard for me to say no completely because that's your money. Tax dollars are your money. But I don't agree with taking the system that we've all agreed to is public education. And that is what makes the world go around, at least here in Texas. Um, I believe that it's a very complicated one. Right now, the Senate. Um, has been shut down by the House on that whole deal, and we'll have to see what kind of ends up shaking out if anything shakes out. There's a lot of opinions, as you can imagine, up there in Austin. Um, but I would like to see, if they, if they decide to do something with public funds, their tax dollars, okay, but we need to make sure that the public schools, because that's the system that we've all agreed to, still get funded. It's okay, you know, we, we just have to figure it out, and, and that may be super high level, super complicated stuff, um, that, that everybody has to sit down and hash through. But I understand, if you're in a failing district, you sh maybe you should have the right to take your kids somewhere else. Um, if you want to leave just because it's convenient for you or, or you know, whatever the question is, then I believe that those school districts still need that money. That's the system that we've all agreed to. Um, and so I would like to see them do something where if they, if they decide to do it, that the, that the school districts that those kids are removed from still get some kind of fund. I'm going to piggyback off of that. I don't think it's just black, it's black and white. If we're going to go black and white, I don't agree with it 100%. I don't think it should be taking funds from our school. But it, if you get down to it, like Chris said, if it's a failing district, I can appreciate why some parents would want to move to a different school. But that opens up more conversations on where does the money go because it's not going to help the failing district by continuing to pull funds out of that district. So, but a black and white question, do I agree with it? No, I do not. Okay, the next question. The district is working to revamp its character education program. How do you feel about this program and what specific topics should it cover? I went to school all over the world, so I don't know if I was exposed to SEL 
maybe that was, maybe I can't remember that far back. Um, but I think it's good for all, all, all students to get at least a little bit of education with that um, because it teaches them to be better, better individuals. Um, and then when they go out, and then, and then when they graduate, they go out and be you know, productive members of society. Um, but I, I actually had to learn about SEO from serving on the school board, and then my wife was a teacher, so she had to teach me about all that. Because uh, I didn't even know what it was until my son said something when he came home, and then my daughter said something. But um, I, I think it's important for, for everybody to get some foundation. So great question. Um, same thing. I didn't know anything about SEL until my daughter came home and said something about it the first time and, and my ears perked up. And I think that happens a lot, right? Um, especially recently, parents are, are getting more involved in the things that our kids are being taught in school. And while I don't have a problem with them being taught to be good citizens, uh, good community members, future leaders of our businesses and our schools and our legislature, um, I just want to make sure that the things that they are being taught stick to basic fundamentals of being a good person. Um, when we start letting tricky things slip in, then that's where the, the slope can get awfully slippery. I feel like you read my notes. <laughs> so I, I'm going to also agree with Chris on that one. Um, I think as a whole, SEL is a fundamentally a good program and our kids should have it. Uh, but I think as long as we keep a close eye on what is being included into those uh, that program and uh, parents, like you said, are being more involved, want to know what's being taught to their kids, I think it can be a simpler, slippery slope. Um, as long as we keep a handle on it and it doesn't get out of control, I'm all for being a better human being. So to your question, it was brought to the school board's attention last year in the August time frame about SEL. And the current curriculum the school was using probably been here 20 years, but it just so happens that that curriculum writes some things that really don't agree with the Liberty Hill culture and values. A group of parents probably brought that to the school district, and what the district did was they listened. And that's really important to note about our district is that when parents get involved and they come forward, the school board listens, and so does Mr. Snell. So character education we're talking about now is part of the shack, and that's what I actually sit on. The school listened and rewrote the character program from scratch. Um, Mr. Motal and the curriculum department did an excellent job. They sent a survey out a couple weeks ago so parents could actually respond to what they think about the new character education curriculum. My favorite thing about it is it removes political distractions that could have been construed with the other curriculum that we were using. And it's just a very neutral, Time for the teacher to talk to students, fills in with the Panther profile, and it teaches our kids to be good citizens and good people in our community. All right, thank you so much. Uh, you, you each started with uh, Mr. Smith, uh, I think 90, 90 seconds for our concluding thoughts. Okay, so this is when I can give my long turnout campaign speech. Um, so, um, if you vote for me, thank you. If you don't, then, you know, oh well. Um, and, but vote for the bond because the school district needs your support and money. And it's not about any one of us sitting up here, it's about the kids. And any one of us will put the kids forward. I've talked to each one individually. And, you know, it, it you couldn't ask for a better group of candidates to run um, for the school because everybody's everybody's focus is on children. Um, so again, if you vote for me, thank you. If not, you know, I'll be all right. Um, but vote for the bond because that's the key takeaway from everything. So, like I said, I believe the experience matters. I've been serving people for 20 years, um, going back to my college days, serving in student government, traveling around the state, lobbying people. I've met with representatives, senators, Governor Perry at the time, multiple people lobbying for money for junior college. I was a junior college kid growing up in West Texas, um, and I believe wholeheartedly in our junior, junior college system. So I spent two years lobbying for money for junior colleges. And then fast forward into serving at the legislature. 
my senator, and then 15 years in the youth group at our church serving with kiddos. Um, so I have the heart and a passion for servanthood. I love it. I love giving my time. I will fight teeth and nails for the things that are right for that particular group. Um, usually able to put the things aside that, that necessarily are my point of view, like when you're working with kiddos, um, you have to you have to listen. You have to be intent on understanding their needs and their concerns. And it's definitely obvious that these days kiddos are suffering with things that we never thought would exist. And I believe that I'm the right guy to lead us into the future. Thank you. So as uh, Terry said, first and foremost, the most important thing for our district right now, regardless of uh, the board uh, members, is the bond being passed 100% full stop. Um, my goal for uh, serving on the board would be a, rep a true representative for our teachers and our kids. I want to be a voice for our teachers, someone that they can come to, express their concerns, fight for their needs, fight for their wants. Um, I have a deep passion for this community and for our kids. Um, I feel like I would be an asset to the community and to the district for my construction experience and my love for this town. Thank you. As a third generation Liberty Hill resident, I believe I can serve the school board well. My papa and granny went to Liberty Hill schools when it was one building, and they raised three kids, including my dad. I was also born and raised here. Serving this town is something that my family has always done. I have decided to run for school board because I have concerns that we could lose sight of the culture and values that have made our district so great. Growing up in Liberty Hill and being a product of this school system, I know firsthand how well it sets up students for success after they leave our district. And I want to see that continue from many years to come. I do not want to let big government tell us how to raise our kids and teach our children. Instead, I want to advocate for the values of this district that continues to build champions. As a district, I want us to focus on letting teachers teach and remove any political distractions from the classrooms, politics belong at home between the parents and their children. Knowing the history of this town and being a product of this school system, I can offer the board a different perspective on policies and decisions than someone who hasn't grown up here. I also want to give back and serve the community that helped raise me. Loving this community has been instilled in me from a very young age. If elected, I will always advocate for the values of this community, our students, our teachers, our staff, and our parents. Thank you, and God bless the Panther Nation. Thank you, gentlemen, for your, for your time this evening uh, to discuss some, some really important topics uh, around our community. Um, that concludes our, our uh, place one discussion. Um, we're actually going to turn it over to uh, Superintendent Steve Snell uh, for a, a presentation around our uh, upcoming bond election. I don't know if there's anything to set up. Okay, there's nothing to set up, so we're going to go here and vote here.
they're involved in chat, they're involved as parents, they're involved with our youth outside of school. So very involved, very dedicated, very qualified candidate. So Panther Nation, you have a hard job in deciding uh, who to vote for. Um, the Independent, thank you all for putting on this forum. Uh, very excited to talk about Liberty Hill, love talking about my district. They told me I had time for a short presentation, which is very hard to give a superintendent a microphone and say anything short. But I want to talk about, um, obviously, the bond tonight. That's why a lot of y'all are here, is to hear about the bond. Um, normally, when I uh, give bond presentations, it lasts about 45 minutes. So, But I know uh, there's lots of questions to ask, so um, definitely want to save time for questions and answers. You guys have seen the demographics. Um, we are growing tremendously. When I started four years ago, we had 4,000 students. Today, we have 8,000. We have over 28 subdivisions currently actively building. And we have, in the very new, near future, 10,500 single-family homes coming. In addition, the city of Liberty Hill is entitled 11,000 apartment units. So lots and lots of opportunities to move to Panther Nation. So we can't control the growth, but we have to lead it. We don't want to react to it. We have to be proactive. We have to get ahead of it. And that is why we're coming to our community for a bond election. We did this two years ago, and we didn't think we'd have to be here this quick. But economic circumstances, lead time for construction, the rising cost of construction, inflation has hit us to the tune of 40% for our entire bond. A lot like your households and the struggle you have with households. So we need to get out there. The growth is coming. Um, we have 13 major construction projects going on or about to be started. Um, we've expanded our schools. One of the candidates mentioned portables. So growth came to us at 23.5% last year. One in four of our students was Brandon Panther. And it came quicker than we thought it was. So even with our best planning, even with our analytics, the housing came quicker than we even thought. So we need to stay on top of it. Uh, we need to stay on top of that growth. And that's one major reason for the bond. Another major region, reason is safety and security. You guys know we're coming up on the 12th month anniversary of Uvalde. And although that caused quite a stir in our legislature, and they're hearing safety bills right now, school safety is always a concern for us. And it's not just about the, the mass events like Uvalde or Santa Fe um, that happened in Texas, but it's everything. It's getting a student on a bus safely, getting them home safely. It's our teenagers who drive getting them safely on and off our property and getting home safe. It's making sure our students have a healthy uh, lunch program. It's making sure our playgrounds are safe. It's making sure we have buildings that are safe and secure to keep the bad guy out. And to help with that, Liberty Hill ISD and the board committed $3.2 million this year alone in safety and security. Part of that was an armed police officer at every campus. So that is a commitment we're making going forward, is that we will have a good guy at our campuses to reduce response time and keep our kids safe. Along with that, I think the Independent had asked a question about relationship with the city and roads, but it's also very important to have a good relationship with our city police, city fire, county emergency services because if something goes down from a car wreck to an accident to a mass event like that we're going to need all law enforcement um, agencies responding to our schools so to keep those relationships um, solid and uh, you know work well together with all the county entities um, is very very important also very important to work with the county and the city with the growth and the developers coming in one of the developers mentioned, or one of the candidates mentioned working with developers to get school sites, and that's critical as well. But working with those developers to bring utilities to those school sites saves the district and ultimately the taxpayers millions of dollars if you can plan it appropriately and stay ahead of it. 
So this bond covers growth, this bond covers safety and security, this bond covers infrastructure. As we grow, and y'all see in the uh, meetings we've been talking about how we're growing in the next 10 years from 8,000 to 18,000. But what everyone needs to understand, we're gonna to continue to grow beyond that. It's gonna take roughly 30 years for the Liberty Hill community to build out. So it's not just high school number two, it's high school number three and four in all of the middle schools and elementary schools associated with that. Having schools inside neighborhoods is critical. Walk to school helps with transportation, but it's also a relationship if you can walk your um, child to school or even ride a golf cart now. So, Great communities build great schools and vice versa. So Panther Nation has always been very supportive, very involved in our schools, and we want them to continue to be involved in our schools. All right, as for the bond itself, three major propositions, right? We have the big proposition to cover schools. I mentioned before the price of construction and inflation. So we had a hard decision to make in Panther Nation. We could either stay on budget for every single project and based on inflation, not have the revenue to complete those projects and deliver unfinished product projects that we would have to go back and ask for more money for, delaying those projects, delaying the opening of schools, um, adding things like portables, which we don't want to do. Um, in a fast growth district, it's very hard to avoid portables, but that's what we're committed to do. And successful bonds help us keep schools, or keep children inside of our buildings. Um, so, what we decided to do is we decided to finish all the major projects but one, complete them to the integrity and the promise we made to our voters, and part of this bond is going back to our community and asking for money to finish high school number two. If that bond is successful, we'll break ground on high school number two in August and hope to have it open in August, that building open in August of 26. We also have uh, the middle school green building, which will be completed in a year. We have an elementary number six will be completed and open this August. And then we have a new elementary school that we're going to break ground on um, later in the spring, right across the street here in Santa Rita Ranch. So, Lots of things happening, um, and then we have the future bond. So in addition to money to complete high school number two, we have money for elementary number eight, elementary number nine, and then money to do the design and site work for elementary 10. So if the construction speeds up, we'll be ready to go. If it slows down, we can wait a little bit. So this will give us some flexibility there. Also, some of our support facilities um, we've outlived their capacity and um, use. So we're asking the community to build a new transportation center that will get us from our current location to that 18,000. Currently, I don't know if everyone knows this, but we transport over 4,700 kids a day, twice a day. We have 64 bus drivers, and our current facility doesn't have parking for that or the space for the staff or the bays to work on those buses. Also, storage is in uh, short supply in Liberty Hill, so we have a maintenance facility that will include warehouse space in that. And then we have land for future school sites. The last bond, the 2021 bond, we were able to acquire over 450 acres for future school sites. That puts us in very good shape for the immediate future, but as we grow, we're gonna to continue to need more school sites, and we'll continue to work with developers um, to get that. So land, infrastructure, um, transportation, maintenance, and schools are in Proposition A. Proposition B, 7.1 million, that is for technology devices. As we grow from 8,000 to 18,000, we will need more devices for that growth. We also, our devices we currently have will age out. So we will need to replace those devices as well if we have a very good plan to do that. By law, student devices have to be in a separate prop. And that's a good thing because we sell those bonds separately and we pay those bonds off much sooner. So we try to pay those bonds off for technology in four to five years. Um, and then the last bond is Prop C. 
And I'll talk about that a little bit. So the last time we had added seats to Panther Stadium and added locker rooms to Panther Stadium. So as we grow, um, we have become very, very crowded. Now we have adequate seating. Soon we will have adequate locker room space. And one of those pain points, because part of being in a great community Friday nights, we have a band that's doubled in size. We have cheerleaders, trainers, dance team, student section, and then all of Panther Nation coming out. Really our pain point was the number of restrooms at the stadium and concession stand lines. So the Long Range Planning Committee added Prop C, which because it's inside a stadium has to be a separate prop. So five million for restrooms, concession stand, and then to replace the turf. Average lifespan of uh, artificial turf is 10 years. We're coming up on 10 years. The shock pad underneath it, it hardens and convinces over time. Concussion protocol, student safety, always a concern of ours. So we'll be looking to replace the turf on Panther Stadium should this bond be successful. So, want to talk real quick, and I'm, I'm going a lot quicker than I'd like to uh, for the independent, but I know time is a precious resource as well. I want to talk about the long range planning committee. So, like the candidate said, about 90 people participated in the long range planning process. It was a great process. This group of teachers, administrators, business, um, we had people from the business world, we had parents, we had community members not attached to the schools at all, but they're taxpayers. So we want to make the best use of our tax dollars and we want everyone to understand the needs of the school. We had that committee analyze that, look at all of the demographic data in the trends. We had them look at the state of our current facilities. We had them look at capacity um, of our campuses. We had them look at a ton of data. They came up with a very robust list of what they wanted for our schools. There were urgent needs on there. There were regular needs. There were nice to haves. Um, there were some big wish items. There were lots of things on that list. We broke into committees to take a deeper dive we had committees and a lot of them were based on our strategic plan of funding and finance, facilities, the educational process. We have high academic expectations in Liberty Hill. We want to make sure the buildings and the programs we have match that expectation. And one thing that I think sets us unique, and you heard this from all the candidates, is culture. We have got to hold tight to our culture we have to be a welcoming community that everybody who's come to Liberty Hill, but we need to hold fast to those core values and belief that has made Liberty Hill a great district for over 100 years. So, growing with the future, keeping those strong values, strong culture is what drove this bond. Once we got that list, we put a price tag on it. And then everybody had to take a step back and really prioritize what we were going to ask for this time. You can't just ask for everything. We're bound by our debt capacity and the amount of money we can responsibly pay off over time that all of our taxpayers, including me, contribute to that. So the committee worked hard, got a great list to recommend to the board. The board molded over and approved this bond. I think it's a great bond package. I think it complements the future of Liberty Hill so well. Um, and like we said, it's, it's not about a building, it's about student learning and academics and teachers and culture. So we think this fits or fills the needs of our immediate future and look forward to um, the voters turnout. We have early voting starting Monday. It runs for two weeks and then the big day is May 6th. Um, you can vote anywhere, but we have our annex gym in downtown Liberty Hill set up to vote, early voting in the day of. Then we have the high school set up the day of voting on May 6th and we have the Santa Rita Ranch House off Ronald Reagan set up. But the way it works today is anywhere there's a poll site, a voting location, no matter where you are, you give them your ID and the Liberty Hill ballot comes up. I had a great question on our places. So our board candidates that are running are running for two places. As a voter, you get to vote on both of those places. They're not tied to geography. So 
Um, you can vote for both board candidates, and then we have three propositions. One last thing before we get to questions, I want to talk about the ballot. So by state law right now, when y'all go to the ballot, you'll see language on all three propositions that says this is a property tax increase. And it doesn't just say it. It has to be in all caps and it has to be bold. All right? There's a difference between property tax and property tax rate. The only thing the school controls is your property tax rate. It's broken into two buckets. Your maintenance and operations side, which this year is 84 cents, and your interest and sinking side, which pays for the bonds, which is at 50 cents. We're at the 50 cent cap. By law, we cannot raise your tax rate. And fun fact for Panther Nation, over the last four years, your maintenance and operation tax rate has gone down 18 cents. It was at a dollar and four cents, now it is at 84 cents, or 86 cents, 84 cents. So really 20 cents in the last four years. So um, you don't see that because property, your property value has gone up so much, but we don't control property value, we can only control tax rate. So when you hear school districts say this bond will not increase your tax rate, what we mean by that is we run the data, there's a formula the state uses, and based on the property value in our district, we can responsibly pay for this bond without raising your tax rate. All right, thank you Liberty Hill Independent. Anybody has any questions for Superintendent Snell? Uh, I'll come around with this mic. We want that to continue at the second high school. 
Um, we want the community to be united around LH, regardless of what school you go to. Um, so we'll definitely be in contact and communication with how we're gonna open the school and give families lead time to plan that way. Great question. All right, I got two questions here, sorry. Um, I need to catch you. The proposed new elementary school here in Santa Maria, do we know, do we have an estimated, like, if through what they know would be? Great, great question. So, that will help. All right, not working. Great question. So the question was uh, about elementary number seven. So elementary seven was approved in the 2021 model. And we've got a design um, working with uh, Santa Rita developers. So it's gonna be a really good plan. Uh, it's gonna have a good traffic pattern and that school will break ground soon and it will be open a year from August. So and that'll provide some relief because they're building in this whole area. I think when it's all said and done, San Arena itself will have 10,000 houses. So, um, but that with the other houses and then um, looking at our capacity for middle schools too as we open middle school three. So the, the next bond will be number eight and nine. And those locations are yet to be determined, but we have school sites in Butler Farms to the west. We have a school site in Larian in the center of our district up 214, and we have another school site in the back of Santa Rita Ranch, in addition to El Dorado, which is being developed north of Santa Rita South right now. So, um, this is a question that I was asked and I was pondering myself for a while, last couple of times I was running for board of trustees. <sighs> what is your take on the single member district and what do you what, what do you take on that? I know I thought about it and I said, you know, right now the community is growing, so it's not hold the call your horse. But uh, there are people like me that are thinking it's been there, something's gonna have to be done on that. What is your take on that? All right. All right, going for great question. So I was asking about single member school board places versus open places. So um, when your places are open, that allows anyone from anywhere to run for school board. When they're bound by geography, you might have three great candidates for three open places, but they can all only run for one. I've worked in districts with both. I've worked in districts with a mix of some geographical places and some open places. Ultimately, that's not my decision. That would be a school board and community decision, but we definitely want representation from all corners of Liberty Hill, whether it's school board or parent committees or long range planning. And that's one thing we did. We asked for volunteers from every campus on that long range planning because we wanted every neighborhood represented, you know, every community represented. So we're all one Liberty Hill and we all made a voice. So. Any way anybody wants to get involved in this district, well, I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah, the reason I'm asking this question is we don't want the same people electing the same six members all the time. And that's what may happen, I'm just thinking, like, uh, scenario wise. Uh, yeah, definitely. But it's, it's definitely that's a community and, and more conversation. But good question. All right, it looks like there's no more questions. I'll turn it back over to Liberty Hill Independent. Want to thank the Liberty Hill Independent once again for putting on a forum for our candidates to involve our community. Want to thank everybody who took time tonight um, to come listen. Of course, thank the candidates for being involved in our district. Liberty Hill High School Culinary for the meal. Unbelievable again. Our, our kids and our teachers are so awesome. And our tech crew in the back. You guys are amazing as well. So, thank your nation. Don't forget to vote. Hopefully, we'll see you at the polls in the next couple weeks. Thank y'all.